of a precious thing you can say then, I love you, Jesus. Would you tell them a few more times right there on your own? Hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. That's right. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. All right, but Father, take us where you want us to be tonight. Take us where you want to go. Lead us. Feed us. And once we've been led and fed, then we know we'll be exactly where you want us to be. And thank you for this time that we're in. Thank you for the blood of Jesus, the name of Jesus. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for the gifts of ministry that you've given us, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher in, in, in uh, uh, maturing us with those gifts and making us fit for ministry, to work in ministry and to build up the body of Christ. We give you glory, honor, and praise for these things. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, well, let's get, get, get ready and get to it. Uh, Get said with me, this is my Bible. It's God's word to me. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, so I do not sin against God. The just shall live by faith, and faith cometh by hearing, and hearing the word of God. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Amen. Amen. I want you to, uh, if you'd be so kind, to, uh, you can go ahead and be seated and, and get a, a pen or uh, get your pen and pad ready. I want to get you some things into your soul before I move on with uh, the message for tonight. Holy Spirit wants me to reveal to you that he is shifting you in a position so that you will pass your next test by the Holy Ghost with flying colors. Whatever the next test is, you will pass that test with flying colors. And then he gave me this question to put out to you. How do you want this situation to end? Or how do you see the current situation ending? Now, I hope you're, you're seeing it from a position of the glory of God, God being glorified. And then he redacted or triangulated this statement with another where are you supposed to be? And then where are you right now? And then this, do you realize that God has a plan? See those three questions? Where am I right now? Where should I be? Now you know there's a difference. There's a discrepancy between those two. But then he says, God has a plan for you. Now, I want you to be, be, be very aware of the weight you carry for the things 
you think you want, all right? Sometimes our heart and our mind get set on, on, on uh, things that are not realities intended for our exact purpose, but the, it creates a weight. And so you can't allow things to be a weight that should not even be on the scale. I give you an example. Uh, of course, you know I was a drum major. And when I got to James Madison University, I'm just thinking, you know, I, I'm gonna still be a, a drum major as well. And I try audition for drum major once, twice, three times. It's a different. It's a whole different game because you have music majors that are auditioning, and and I'm I'm not a music major at that time. And um, I let that become a weight to me. And the Lord said to me, I didn't even, I didn't even call you to be a drum major there. What I, what I wanted to get out of you as a drum major, I got, I got into you when you were in high school. And you typecast yourself and just said, well, this is what I should be doing next. But that's not, I had something different for you. But I let it, I let it be a weight. I eventually had to let it go, but it was a weight. Same thing could happen. You, you might, might think, well, I, I want to be with such and such a person. And they, they you know, they, they, they broke up with me or they or they with somebody else. But are you sure that, that that was supposed to be the person? You're allowing something false to be a weight. And, 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 and what does the scripture say? Lay aside every weight that can really weigh you down and cause you to miss, miss out. Most of what you feel you're missing out on has nothing to do with God fulfilling the purpose that he really put in your life. Now, it feels like it, looks like it, but it really has nothing to do with it. All right? Um, the purpose that God has for you, <laughs> the purpose that God, I, I keep seeing these white, the white ball, and there's one right there, just big on the glass back there, but it's, it's that right there. And I was like, what, what, why am I seeing these, these big, what, where, where is it coming from? It looked like a cue ball. Uh, oh, see there, it's a candle, but back there it just looks like a, like a cue ball. Uh, most of your disappointments can't shake a stick at God's purpose. Well, none of your problems can, can hold a stick or hold a candle, so to speak, to what God has purposed for you. But you have to know that. <clears throat> and then, I want to say this. God is so big and so strong and so mighty that there's nothing he cannot do. I wonder, do most Christians really carry that in their pocket? Do they carry that with them? Genesis 18, 14, and Jeremiah 32, 17, ask this question, is there anything too hard for God? Well, I, I want to answer it tonight. No. Nothing too big. Nothing too big, nothing so bad, nothing too hard. Nothing too, too difficult. He can fix it all. As a matter of fact, the glory of walking in Christ is realizing he already fixed it before it happened. So rather than asking him, Lord, what are you going to do? Really, a good question is, Lord, what did you do? What, what, what you done done? What, what have you already done about this? Now, this goes for your marriage. This goes for your children. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, if you, if, if you intend on being married, we, we have at least five next year, weddings. If you're going to plan on being married, you are going to have some challenges. Amen. Well, isn't that a word curse? No, that's a word truth. <laughs> you have challenges just by yourself. Now, if you try to merge that with somebody else, and the devil is fighting that with everything he's got, oh, there's going to be some challenges. But there's nothing too difficult for my God. 
Amen. You ain't saying nothing. Amen. If you're going to have children, you're going to have offspring. Guess what? I hope you have an extra set of nerves because they will get on every single one of the first set. It will wear out that first set. You're going to be exchanging a new set in. Amen. Doesn't mean you don't not love them. It, it, I, I love my children to no end, but I'm telling you what, I'm just, what in the world? And my parents said the same thing about me. <laughs> like MC Hammer said, and the story goes on and on. So Genesis 18, 14, and Jeremiah 32, 17. Is there anything, uh uh-uh, Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. Is there anything too hard for you? You feel like you're not going to make it? Just wake up early in the morning when the stars are still out and watch the sun come around that corner and knock darkness clear out the sky. Darkness had nothing to say, had nothing to, they could do about it. I dare you to be disappointed and discouraged in that day. Hallelujah. The Lord, in these last Kingdom College nights of the year, is working on your legacy. Now, your, your destiny is your individual purpose as a person. Each of us has an individual purpose. But the legacy is the purpose of your family. And I want you, I want you with the mindset that my tribe, the tribe I lead or the tribe of which I'm a part, is going to fulfill all its glory in the land of the living. I don't care what kind of pitfalls, I don't care what kind of mishaps, what kind of fumbles and intercepts. You can still throw interceptions and still win a game. Three nights, two nights ago, Dak, Dak Prescott get, dropped, fumbled the ball and was a scoop and a score. But they still beat them. Cry, Eagles, cry. Where, where's the camera at? Thank you, Cynthia. I, I know I can count on you. But the Cowboys only as good as the last game because another group of people will show up this Sunday. Prosperity and posterity. God said, I'm blowing both of them up. Your prosperity, that's your wealth, and your posterity, that's your offspring. I'm, I'm fixing them all. I have a plan for all of them. And, and, and he says this, if you have multiples, the most distant one will be leading the pack. All right. Don't believe me, just watch. Hello? The prodigal son, the one that left, that was the worst one off. But he actually had the greater revelation. Hallelujah. I see, I see your whole house prophesying, testifying, laying hands, casting out devils. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Over, above where the parents did, way, way past the parents. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Speaking in tongues, way more than mama, way more than mama. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, mama's a good tongue talker, but what, 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 if, what if the son speak, speak in tongues more than the mom? Hallelujah. I, 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 I believe it's possible. See, there's nothing too hard for God. Nothing. It is nothing. So your prosperity and your posterity are already spoken for. God claimed them. Hallelujah. All right. 
or be seated, be seated. Let, let me spend a few minutes with this on tonight. I want to deal with expressing your sonship credentials, e- expressing what it means to be a son of God. Now, I'm not going to be, be saying son and daughter because the, in the Bible, the term son can refer to a direct creation of. So we're all sons of God, sons of the living God, because he created us. John chapter 1 and verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Now notice you have to receive and believe. No, he didn't say anything in there about coming to church. It didn't say anything in there about joining the church. It said, receive him and believe on his name. Say, say it with me. I, I, I receive him and I believe on his name. The things pastor just said to me, I believe those things in the name of Jesus. See, that's, that's what's important. All right. And then in verse 14, this was where I was on Sunday. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. You see that there? Now, because you are a son of God, and and this is why Christmas is so important. Now, Christmas is important. Resurrection is important. But resurrection was the purpose, was, was, was the, 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 the peace God was getting to. So you notice the shroud of mystery, the shroud of stupidity that's around Christmas and resurrection. A white man, a heavy white man on a sleigh. propelled by flying reindeer, carrying toys built by elves. See, all all of that is to cover up what really is going on. Then we have to deal with the Easter uh, Easter bunny laying eggs. And we all know chickens lay eggs. Rabbits don't lay eggs. Rabbits are mammals. They They have a live birth. You ain't saying nothing. And so we, we're all, all obscure and, and, um, and just obfuscation going on to keep us from really seeing what it was God was working on, what he was completing, what he was manifesting in these great tremendous acts that even as they stand, no one else has, has duplicated them. So... I want to, this word, uh, write it down, waypoint. I was studying this earlier. Listen to this, waypoint, a waypoint is a reference point that helps us know where we are and where we're going, whether driving, sailing, flying, waypoints, Help us to find our way. So I, I want to go over some waypoints tonight so you can lock in on where am I in this plan that God has for me. Because you, we, we get, Jesus help me, we get lost. We get lost in the, the tiny traffic of our individual life and we lose and we forget 
the wide spanse. Uh, Romans, uh, rather, Revelation 1 8, Revelation 1 11, Revelation 21 6, Revelation 22 13 referred to Jesus as Alpha and Omega. In other words, as far, I think I said this on Sunday, he has no beginning and he has no end. So you can see how big and strong and mighty God is. He has no beginning and he has no end. And then here you are, this tiny speck in the middle. Your problems can't barely catch his notice. But yet to you, what you're dealing with now is bigger. It's so big. But God is bigger. He's bigger than what you're dealing with. What you're dealing with based on that timeline of no beginning and no end God, God, God with his eyes closed and a hand tied behind his back just on sheer willpower can fix whatever you're dealing with. Don't let him actually get involved and start cracking heads. Say this with me. Problem solved. Now. now. Situation avoided. Situation avoided. Now. now. Favor found. Favor now. 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 That's in your sonship credentials. It's in your portfolio. In your resume, can I, can I go James Bond on you? In your dossier, your divine dossier. Jesus is the master fixer and master problem solver. Basically, the last three years of his life, they were trying to kill him. And couldn't find him, even though he was in, in wide open. They couldn't get him, though, because he said, it's not my time. Then the only reason they got him is he, 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 he stopped trying to get away. Jesus was a bad boy. Jesus was the goat. He, he, Jesus is the holy goat. <laughs> He's the greatest of all time, man. They were trying to kill him. They had corner him, and he was over on the edge of a cliff. Then we got him now, and then he, he just did, did a 180 and walked right past them. They didn't even see him. Which way did he go? Which way did he go? He gone. The grace and the anointing on his life, but he refused, he refused to be limited to a to an earthly being, to a human status. He knew he was anointed. He knew he had grace on his life. No, you can't take my life. I lay it down, but you, but you can't take it. And the reason is I, I have to pick it up again. So I, 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 I have to lay it down. Listen to me right now. Now I got... I got this early this morning, but it's for you. Stay in the moment. Inhale it. Embrace it. And enjoy it. Because God's bringing you out on top. Oh, my God, man. Don't run from the moment. Don't hide the moment. Don't fear the moment. Watch me. Don't dread the moment. Stay in it. I'm staying. Good. My God is about to, he's big and he's mighty. Nothing he can't do. Nothing too hard for him. He's about to show up, show out, show off, and show on. And I'm here for the show. So I think I'll hang around. 
I'm talking about marriage. I'm talking about parenting. I'm talking about children. I'm talking about grandchildren. Stay in the moment. Don't run. Don't hide. Don't be ashamed. Don't fear. Don't dread. Stay in it. Inhale it. I smell victory. Embrace it. I feel triumph. Enjoy it. Count it all joy. It's all right. It's coming out the way God said it. I dare you to say this with me. <laughs> Glory to God, man. Glory. Don't dance with the devil. He's a pig. You dance with him, you'll get dirty, and he'll enjoy it. So don't dance with him. Dance with the Father. Stay in the blood. Activate your Jesus credentials. I'm a credential kind of man. I, 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 I love credentials. I, I, love, I love having to be at a place and demonstrate I belong here. I, I, I relish those. I remember when the, uh, the first iPhone came out. I waited in line a whole I, I, Good luck on them getting me to stand in line now. I ain't standing in line for none of that crap. But I stood in line for hours to get the first iPhone. And uh, I was in line, I don't know, six that morning, just waiting in line. And they gave you a, a certain uh, 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 a tag or a coupon or something that said you were in line. And then I remember the closer you got to the open and people tried, they, they tried to ease their way into the line. Talking, oh, that's my girlfriend right there. But, you just, you, but, you, but why are you up here then? <laughs> but you're just trying to ease your way, just trying to make conversation with the people. But then you don't have the credential to get in. Or when I fly commercial, I'm a general aviation, I'm a property aviation man myself. But when I fly commercial, it got to be first class. 2A, 2B, 1D, 1E, something like, something like that. And then invariably somebody will try, they know they in, they know they in 25A, but they're going to try to sit up there. But you're going to be found out because you don't have the credentials. Can I see your boarding pass? Oh, 22 is, 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 20, is, 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 is back there. Get your tail back there. I can see it. I see him working. I see him trying to, trying to ease in there. But, but you got to have the credentials. When I go to, uh, I take my family to see the Cowboys in uh, Cowboy Stadium or anywhere else we would go. And because of connections, they were credentials. You ain't saying nothing. And we get to the stadium, and, and you, you, it's a mass of people, but then because of the credential, it's like, oh, oh, we need you to come over here, please. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a different elevator. Everybody else is on steps. You, you, you're in the elevator. Then I say to Tracy, Tracy, look at these people once, because you're not going to see them again the rest of the night. <laughs> and we didn't. Credentials. Luxury suite. Like that in the Word. Your credentials make you different from unbelievers. The, the things you can say and pray, an unbeliever cannot say and pray. The things you call for that angels start jumping, and they, they just look at unbelievers, but when you say it, they start jumping. All of heaven and earth will shake, dance, rattle, and roll when you call for it. There's a difference, there's a difference between you and an unbelieving believer. 
That's why it does matter where, what address you go to on Sunday morning. It does, it, do, it does matter where you pay your tithe. It does matter where you sow your seed. It does matter where you stand at the door as an usher or a greeter. It does matter. It straight up matters. Because it makes a difference. And so you have credentials. You have credentials. I said you have credentials. And then when you're not in the right place, someone, someone hits you like, this is not right. Let me, let me work on my credentials. After taking Ariana and the family with me, I took all of them, all of them. We had two assistants and then all five kids and Trace and myself. There's a whole, a whole crowd of people. Luxury suite, luxury street, luxury suite. And then finally is the opening season of the Columbus crew who just won the MLS championship. But this was the first season. I think they won it that year, if I'm not mistaken. I had season tickets. First season of the crew. And I, 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 I took David and Ari to a, uh, they were younglings, took, took them to a, a, a soccer match. And we sat up there. And Ariana, I couldn't catch what she was saying, but she said it several times. Dad, where's the room? Because we're sitting on the bleachers with the commoners, <laughs> with the lumping proletariat, <laughs> the riffraff, the people of a baser sort. And she said, where's the room? And I, I'm just like, I'm, I'm, or I, I, don't know, I don't know what she's talking about. Where's the room? Where, then it hit me. She said, every time we come to an event like this, we, we're in a suite. I want you used to being in a suite, in life, in the supernatural, in the divine, in the miraculous, in manifestations. I, I, I'm not in the bleachers. I'm in a, I'm in a suite with the king. Hallelujah. Activate your credentials. Then I took David, opening season of uh, AT&T Stadium. It was Cowboy Stadium at that time, and it took David, and uh, we stayed in the, in the hotel. We went two nights before we were in the hotel, and because of special credentials, we had a we had lanyards, but 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 it had a it had a it had a, a big it had, it had had a big a big badge on it, and so we were on the shuttle on the way over to the stadium, and other people that were in the hotel were also on there, and uh, a lady looked over. She kept looking, and she. she she just kept looking at, 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 she said, she said, well, honey, why, why they have that? <laughs> credentials. Well, what are your credentials? Let me go over them real shortly, real quickly with you. Number one, pleading the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Glory to God. That's something an unbelieving believer or a non-believer cannot do. In the name of Jesus. I, 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 I plead the blood of Jesus over this scenario. The, the, the blood of Jesus that wipes out sin, the blood of Jesus, it, it cancels sin. The blood of Jesus that makes enemy, that makes demons tremble. That blood, I plead the blood of Jesus. Hey, well, wasn't it, what, what? What when they shed 2,000 years ago should be dried up by now. No, the blood shall never lose its power. It's powerful blood. It, it, it never loses its power. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hey, amen. There, there, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. I wish I could see that syringe drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Sinners plunge beneath that flood and lose all their guilty stains. Then walk out of that, walk out of that shower like they never did anything wrong. Oh, glory to God. I, I, I think I just got a revelation. It's more powerful and engaging and enthralling to have done wrong, be cleansed, and act like you've never done wrong than to have never done wrong at all. It's more glorious to know I need that blood. It's more glorious to be cleansed by that blood. Yes, yes, yes. 
I'm clean. Look at somebody say, I'm clean, man. I'm clean. Clean it in the board of health. Plead the blood of Jesus. Plead that blood. I plead the blood of Jesus over my child. I plead the blood of Jesus over this case. I plead the blood of Jesus over this situation. I plead the blood of Jesus. Eight straight years of defeat, but I plead the blood. Ain't nothing gone right yet, but I plead the blood. It's the blood of a grown man, not the blood of a baby. Number two, invoking the name. Invoke, invoke is, is a word, it's a provocative word, like provoke. Like in the name, sick him, sick him, sick him. In the name, that name, access is a name above every name. Don't, oh Jesus, let's go. Don't let the name of the judge be revealed. Don't let the name of the magistrate be revealed. Don't let the name of the sickness be revealed because once we get a name on it, that name is under this name. The name of Jesus is above every name. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Doctor says something going on. Doc, doc, what's the name of it? Just find out what's the name. Plead the blood. Invoke the name. Apply the vision. What has the Lord said? What has the Lord shown? Apply that. And then number four, release the anointing. Number four, release the anointing. The anointing is God's character, God's personality. All God is, all he can do, all he, he brings with him as the anointing, removing burdens and destroying yokes of all type. Of every type. Of every type. Let me tell you something about your seed. May I? I I'm going to anyway. If God was able to raise his son from the dead, he certainly could get your son out of the dark. Oh, man, y'all... Y'all going to really make me earn my pay tonight, right? You're going to really make me, huh? If he can raise his son from the dead, he certainly will raise yours, mine, ours, from the dark. We're going to walk in so much victory, we're going to have the devil praying for the rapture to happen. He's he going to be praying, just let it happen, Lord. I can't take no more defeat. Just, just go ahead and give it to him. Just take them out of here. And I decree every victory that was stolen from you, every victory that you and I have fumbled, every victory that you and I have slept on, the, the divine paddles of the Holy Ghost are being placed on that right now, I, 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 oh, I see it. I see Jesus putting the paddles on it. Clear. Kaboomda. Kaboomda. All your dead dreams coming back alive. Clear. Kaboomda. Humboomda. I'm glad I came tonight. Let's go over those four. Somebody give me the first one. All right, somebody, what does that sound like? Somebody tell, I just say it out loud. What does it sound like? I plead the blood of Jesus over and then fill in the blank. I plead the blood of Jesus over this. Number two, invoking the name. Somebody, what does that sound like? 
Satan, I cast you out. In Jesus' name. See? Invoke that name. Number three. <laughs> Apply the vision. And then number four. All right. Let me give you these last four real quick. And then we'll, we'll, I'll dismiss you early tonight. What are you, what am I in Christ? Why am I to be? Yes. Come on. Come on. Claim the victory. Oh, I claim the victory. All right. Hallelujah. All right. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Receive that seed. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Number one, you're a new creature. What am I in Christ? I'm a new creature. I'm not the same. All that crazy stuff, that, it, mm, it isn't me. You remember bridesmaids? Remember Kristen Wiig? Remember she, she, they, they gave her something to make her feel better on the plane and she, she went out of her mind? And as she came up and sat in the seat, in first class, she's supposed to be in coach. She came and sat in the first seat, and the, the flight attendant said, what are you doing up here? She said, it, it, it isn't me. I, I'm, I'm, Mrs., uh, I, I'm, I'm Mrs. Iglesias. It wasn't you that did that craziness, that did that foolishness, that dropped the ball, that did the nasty, that that was not you. It looked like you, walk like you, talk like you, but the blood says that's not you. And the blood doesn't lie. So when you say, I'm filthy, I'm dirty, I don't deserve this, I'm not forgiven, you are lying. Because the blood says that wasn't you. I'm a new creature. Number two, Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. I am complete. I am complete. I'm not missing anything. And what, I'm, what it looks like I'm lacking, the Lord can make it up. In fact, what it looks like I'm lacking is in me. It just needs to be uncovered. I don't need to add it to myself. It's already in me. It needs to be uncovered. I need to let it out. I'm complete. I don't need a wife to be complete. I don't need a husband to be complete. I'm complete. For the sake of discussion, mind experiment. Let Tracy go off. Let the kids go off and lose their mind. I'm walking with Jesus. Well, we got a revelation. We're going to be Muslims. We are Allah. Go ahead on. I'm sticking with Jesus. I'm complete. What if they leave? Let them all leave. I don't want them to leave. I'm saying, what if, let, let them all leave. It's not changing me. See, some of us, some of us love the idea of being in a relationship so much, we'll sacrifice Jesus to hold on to this so-called relationship. We'll sacrifice our pastor to hold on to this relationship. We'll sacrifice apostle so we can be in this relationship. I don't want nothing that bad. Go to hell on. I'm not cussing. It's a town called Hell On. <laughs> My daughter's laughing at me. I, I got two minutes. Number three, I'm more than a conqueror. Romans 8, 28 through 37. I'm more than a conqueror in him. Glory to God. I'm, I'm a new creature. It makes sense I'm complete. And then it would also make sense that I'm more than a conqueror. And then number four, I'm divinely capable. Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ. Which strengthens me. I can get everything accomplished I need to get accomplished. 
I have grace and wisdom to do it excellently. I shared with one of my sons earlier tonight how important it is to recognize how important it is to rec- how important it is to recognize that I got you. I, you know I was looking for you. How important it is to recognize you have little rocks, big rocks, and sand all have to fit in the same in the same container. Well, how'd you get them in there? If you put all the sand in first. It'll fill up the space, and then the, the big rocks and, and little rocks won't fit. So it's sequencing that's important. What's the next right thing to put in the box? What, what's the order in which I need to fo- go forward? So I put the big rocks in. Then I put the little rocks. Then I pour the sand on, and the sand gets, gets to fill in all the nooks and crannies. Then I have enough room for everything. So you have to learn how to stack your responsibilities and understand that it's the order in which you do things and that some things can be done in threes. Uh, Washing the clothes takes 50 minutes to do a wash, 50 minutes to do a dry, and then 20 minutes to fold. So that's two hours. Cleaning my room takes 30 minutes. And then getting breakfast done is, is you know, will be another, or lunch, whatever the case may be, that's, that's going to take 30 minutes. Well, it's two hours, 30 minutes, that's, that's three hours. But all that can be done actually in two hours. So now I just made up, what's Ariana talking about? Girl, girl, uh, girl math. Uh, it's three hours, but if I learn how to stack those, so rather than do the clothes and waste time doing nothing else, I start the clothes, clean the room while a, a load is going. So I just bought back that 30 minutes. Then when I put the clothes in to dry, then while they're drying, I'm be fixing breakfast. Then when they finish drying, I've already eaten. And then all I got to do is fold, that's 20 more minutes. You see, I'm, I'm, I'm being super, uh, in that case, being naturally effective, but there's a way to do this in the spirit realm. To stack, say stack. stack. Holy Ghost, show me how to stack what needs to be done. Reveal to me the supernatural. As a matter of fact, I, 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 we're going to go st- stand up, in fact, stand up. How much did Jesus get done in three years? He trained 12 men, fulfilled his purpose, got them into their purpose, put the devil on the run, made the Sadducees look foolish, put the devil on the defense, had, the de- had demons in a spin cycle. He did all that in three years. Ha! Huh? Because he knew how to stack. He said, I- I'm anointed to deal with the blind and the broken hearted. I can do it all. Well, isn't that what Philippians 4.13 says? I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. It means whatever I'm called to do, I can do it. Look at somebody and say, you can do it. I don't care how tough it is. You can hold it. Give God thanksgiving and praise, man. Hallelujah. Glory to God. My sonship credentials. I want you to see a lanyard around your neck. Son of God. Child of God. Give me those, uh, give me those credentials again. Pleading the blood of Jesus, all right? Invoking the name of Jesus. Apply the vision. Huh? All right, and releasing the anointing. And then what, what, what are you in Christ? I'm a new creature in Christ. Where is that in the scripture? 2 Corinthians 5.17. And I am complete. All right. I don't care what TransUnion and Equifax say. Hammer those people. They're not saved anyway. Forget them. 
go ahead and trust God and let God do what he's going to do right in their face. He can go in the computer and change anything he wants. Or he can just give you the money and let you pay everything off. It doesn't, it doesn't, let, let the Lord deal with the, the X's and O's. You just talk to the Jimmys and the Joes. I've had it with being a second-class citizen in this raggedy world. Jesus came down from the realms of glory. He took off his, his wealth and became poor so that we, through his poverty, might be rich. We're in heaven? No, here. So I'm going to walk it out. I'm walking it out right now. I've made mistakes. I've dropped the ball. I've fumbled the ball. I've thrown picks. I've given up scoops and scores. I'm still winning the game. I'm still winning. I'm, 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 I, I am Denzel Washington in training day at the end. I'm winning anyway. I'm a winner anyway. The Lord will find a way. All right. Uh, give me the other two. I'm more than a conqueror, and I'm divinely capable. I can do all things through Christ. And we talked about doing what there? Stacking, all right? Stacking, because when you look at, at, at 19 things to do, it can be overwhelming. But let the Holy Ghost show you how to stack them, and then now you're, you're doing in the space of Three things, in the space of one thing, you're getting three things done. And then lastly, I'm going to tell you this. Celebrate, Lord, this is the Holy Ghost, and then we really have to go. Celebrate Jesus and yourself. <laughs> celebrate Jesus, and then when you stack and get things done, celebrate yourself. Thank God. Encourage yourself in the Lord is what I'm saying. Like, Lord, we did this. Glory to God. I'm not a waste. I'm not a wasteoid. I'm not a maxi zoomed dweeby. I, I actually can get some things. To, I, I, I have some capability. Look at what the Lord can do when I yield myself. Yes. Ooh, glory to God. I'm something when I'm in him. Yes. Look what I got. Ooh, look at this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is great and I'm in him. Yes. Praise God. Give God thanksgiving and praise.